Hello and welcome to the futuristic universe of the UIM E1 World Electric Powerboat Series. Last year we introduced you to the concept of electrifying water, bringing all electric racing to its next natural home, the ocean, rivers and lakes of the planet with the world's first electric powerboat championship. Today you're going to see how we will do just that as we reveal the final design of the sleek and innovative Racebird, the revolutionary electric powerboat that will fly over the water in stunning locations around the globe. And we will also delve deeper into the vision for the legacy of the E1 series and how it will be organised and run. In today's launch, I'm going to be joined by the two people who created this concept, partners, pioneers and friends, Alejandro Agag and Wadi Basso. We'll hear from the team that have created the new race bird, its designer Sophie Horn and naval architect Brunello Acampora, as well as speaking to Raffaele Culli from the International Governing Body of Powerboating, UIM. And we're going to tell you more about what the E1 series hopes to achieve and see how preparations are going for the debut season. Let's start with the two people whose idea this is. One is a pioneer of sustainable racing who has created three electric racing series from scratch and the other is an entrepreneurial motorsport engineer with a passion for sport and technology. A meeting of minds that is the E1 series has now made them business partners. So please welcome Alejandro Agag and Roddy Basso. Hello, welcome. Hi. How, are, How are you? We're great. We're here in the digital world. In the digital world. This is the future. I'm so glad you're here. Now, Alejandro, I'm going to start with you. You've electrified city streets racing with Formula E, conquered remote corners of the planet with Extreme E, and now you're going one step further. So tell us why E1 Series appeals to you. Well, of course, E1 Series, first of all, is going to be a fantastic uh, sporting spectacle. Mm. But, uh, you know, I believe and we believe that there is a gap um, in the market for uh, electric racing in the water. That has a real impact, that can leave a legacy. And this is born from interest that we're seeing from partners, for host cities, from teams all around the world. Just like we have with uh, Formula E and Extreme E, uh, the E1 series is going to raise awareness of electric technologies and push their development. We are thinking very big. This is a big project, long term. Uh, it will take time to make a real change in marine mobility, but we need to start the process somewhere. And we need to start using the sport as a platform to create this change in marine mobility. I like it. So you're not thinking small at all. This is very ambitious. And E1 series clearly has a great future ahead. Uh, but this past year hasn't exactly been your easiest time to launch, has it? Well, no. I mean, it's true that we came up with the idea to launch an ambitious um, you know, project like this, and uh, then a global pandemic hit. And you know, I, I say it's always, we've been like running a marathon with a 50 kilogram uh, backpack. But imagine what we can do, what we are going to do now, when hopefully that backpack uh, comes off. Yeah. But thanks to the great team we have, led by Rodi, Yanni, with the design team, with Sophie Horn, with Brunello Acampora, we've been, we managed to get to here. We are now here, we made it to this point, and now we're getting ready to race, and the announcements today are a big step in that direction. It really is. The only way is up. And I know we're all excited to see the bot revealed. Uh, so what did you think when you saw it for the first time? When I saw the design of the Razor for the first time, I, 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 was, I was really impressed. I loved it. And, you know, we, in the, in the E1 series, we need a design that will make people dream. We are going to be trying to bring them to, you know, to, the, to the path of the future, and they need to see that on the design of the boat. It really reflects the spirit of E1, spirit of pushing boundaries, of design, of new technology, but with a purpose. That is the race bird. I like that. And Roddy, would you say that showcasing electric technology is a vital part of the E1 series vision? Well, absolutely. Uh, technology is an enabler for scalable and accelerated change. But technology doesn't have to be the protagonist of the narrative, of course. It has to serve our vision, which is very much about 
the awareness of the water, the status of the water, and also our approach, which is the approach of races. We know what the sense of urgency is and we want to contribute to a better water condition and exploration for the future of the marine industry. I like the sound of that, but how do you think you can contribute to the acceleration of the electrification process within the marine industry? Well, we are an evolving project and we, uh, we want to innovate. But of course, given the time frame that we are giving ourselves, um, we need to, we had to be smart in designing on how to innovate. And the main driver will be cross-fertilization across sectors. Mm -hmm. So we will take all the lessons learned in the high-end automotive and motorsport from sailing and from motonautic, of course, and we will try to apply the state of the art of these technologies into our race birds in order to make sure that it will be straight away a great example of technology and solution for a better navigation. And, you know, that's the key point, I guess, Alejandro, that E1 series has a positive, lasting legacy. So what can you tell us more about that? Marine mobility is a, a big source of pollution in waters. We get so much uh, pollution, uh, oil, so all sorts of things, uh, in our lakes, in our rivers, in the ocean. So we have to electrify as much as we can marine mobility. And the first step for that is going to be electrify recreational mobility. Uh, what we can call the day boat, the boat you take for the day and then you can recharge it during the night. Uh, and electric powertrains and batteries today have the capacity, the technology to do that very, very well. So we want to use the E1 to be the platform where those technologies can develop. And then once you have perfected the technologies racing, you can then apply them to the boats that you're going to sell to the general public and to you know, facilitate general adoption of these electric boats. I like it, so you're making it commercial and accessible for everyone to use all year round as well. Not only that, we are going to also leave behind a number of charging points in the places where we race. And uh, because of course, if you have an electric boat, a day boat, then at night you want to plug it yeah. somewhere and be able to charge the battery for the next day. And we're going to leave behind those charging points, those legacies in the cities or in the remote locations where we work. So they become, in a way, electrified areas. It's brilliant, it really, really is. Roddy, is the E1 series going to be a marine research platform as well? Yeah, well, of course, we took the inspiration from the NASA International Space uh, Station. And we, since we are a global sport and we will uh, go and uh, race in uh, incredible places around the world, we want to offer to the scientific communities the opportunity to join us and explore more and understand how to find more and more solution about the waters, the oceans and, and, and all these sort of things. Um, in the meantime, uh, of course, we will try to reduce, we will use this to reduce our impact uh, of our race events, seat events and everything, but the real goal is to leave a long-lasting change in the marine industry. Alejandro, would you say that sustainability is one of the most important parts of E1 series? Of course, of course, a big part of it is the race, the show, yeah. and, and that's at the heart of it. But that's kind of the excuse to build on it, uh, to deliver an important message. Uh, and, you know, there is a very important message to deliver about the water and the state of the water. Uh, the water is our most precious resource, mm. but we have huge problems uh, with the water in our seas, in, in the ocean, in the lakes. By 2050, there is going to be more plastic uh, in the sea than fish. Uh, about 8 million tons of plastic end up every year in our seas, coming from uh, inland rivers, waterways. Um, and this plastic is then gets eaten by the fish, kills them, and we cannot recover the plastic. 70% of the plastic sinks to the bottom of the ocean and makes it impossible for us to, ever to, to, uh, to clean it up. And of course, our daily choices affect the general situation of the water, what we eat, what we throw in the garbage. So delivering this message uh, of awareness about the state of, of the water is, is, is very, very important. Um, a third of the oil, for example, that goes into the oceans uh, come from a uh, leak from the, from the cities, run off from our cities. Uh, it's three times more than, you know, these, uh, these uh, spills that you see, these, these disasters of these tankers and so on, uh, you know, uh, have as a consequence. So, so really we need, to, we need to bring this message uh, and the E1 series can be a great platform because a lot of people watch sport, mm. but sometimes they don't watch, you know, environment documentaries. Yeah. So watching a race of these super cool, futuristic uh, electric powerboats can help deliver that message. 
I like that. You're making like sustainability sexy. Yeah, that's the, that's the plan. <laughs> it's a really good plan. I'm on board. So, Roddy, how are you going to get that message across? Well, the key um, event that we will try to build is, of course, around the cities. We will uh, uh, build a very exciting sport in terms of sport event itself. Uh, we will show very soon the design of the power board and this will tell a lot about our plans and uh, um, how we want to contribute to this sport. In the meantime, together with the cities, we will cooperate in order to build a exciting, fun uh, city event around the race in order to deliver our vision. So it will be, uh, of course, a big project, uh, but we are ready for it. I love it. I can't wait. I'm so glad you're ready for it. I'm, I'm sure we are too. I certainly am. Thank you. Um, now, Alejandro, you're not alone in communicating this very positive message because you also have an investor who shares your vision for a more sustainable future. So please tell us more. Absolutely. We are delighted today uh, to announce and to welcome the Public Investment Fund as an investor and partner uh, in our company. Uh, this investment of the Public Investment Fund that will sit along other investments that they have uh, made uh, in companies like Lucid, the electric car company, in the Formula e Championship and others, uh, show that uh, the PIF thinks that investing in electrification uh, is gonna pay off in the future uh, and is gonna have good returns. So I'm delighted to have such an important investor with us. Uh, together we're gonna accelerate the preparations of the launch of the uh, E1 series. We both share the same vision for a more sustainable future. And uh, it's great to start with such a big energy behind us, with such a big uh, you know, support, uh, because this will, will make this championship you know, incredibly strong. I have no doubt about it. Thank you both so much for speaking to us today. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you've heard the concept and the mission, but the E1 series will not be complete without its electric powerboat. We're here just ahead of World Oceans Day on the 8th of June, and the E1 series electric powerboat is a symbol of the ambition to electrify water-based mobility and reduce the huge environmental pressures on underwater ecosystems. The E1 series vessel is already in advanced stages of engineering development and will begin prototype testing this coming winter. So let's meet the future of power boating. Here it is, the race bird. Wow, that is so impressive and looks really fast, just floating there. So let me tell you some of the key statistics about this incredible boat. The race bird is seven meters long, up to three meters wide, with foils rising half a meter from the water. Made entirely of carbon fiber, the power boats will weigh only 800 kilograms. And all the E1 series boats will be built in Pisa, Italy. The race bird was co-created by Seabird Technologies founder Sophie Horn alongside Brunello Acampora, founder and CEO of Victory Marine, the official engineering and manufacturing supplier of the E1 series. And I'm delighted to say that Sophie joins us now. Sophie, hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. You're looking great and, you know, the design is looking just as well. So talk us through the design inspiration. Well, I believe you haven't seen anything like this out there yet, so we didn't really have a reference. So we started from blank papers, kind of, and thought about efficiency, safety regulations from UIM, the race format, of course. How, how can we take electric boats to the maximum in terms of design and technology? So here, when you see the foiling, uh, you know, uh, the 40 centimeter above the water, everything makes sense. So it's a purpose behind the whole design. Uh, and then to try to showcase something from the future 
as the name suggests, race bird, it's inspired by the seabirds. Uh, so you have the glide mode that I say, right above the water. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole inspiration comes from that glide mode to increase the efficiency to the maximum. Wow, so yeah. you're working alongside nature to really push the boundaries. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we're saying uh, inside Seabird and E1, that we want to design with nature and not against. I love that. It's creative and it's really forward thinking. It really is stunning and breathtaking to look at. How fast does it go? What's the speed? It's 50 knots, the maximum, uh, and that is enough. <laughs> uh, going back to the race format and uh, the turns and twists around. So it's going to be fast enough. I love that. I love that. Well, fasten your seatbelts. Where, uh, where can we get one? Well, this exact model, maybe not, but we will create something very similar. So we're developing right now. Um, we're using the same development in the race birds into the brand Seabirds. They're going to be a sharing service for everyone to use, you and me and everyone else. <laughs> uh, so it will actually feel like you're going to travel with the race birds and uh, create memories with family and friends. I, I love that. I'm going to be traveling in style. I really can't wait. Thank you so much for joining us, Sophie. Thank and congratulations. It really is stunning. Thank you. Now we're going to hear from the other co-creator of the race bird, Brunello Acampora, who is joining us remotely. Roddy, over to you. Brunello, it's great to see you. It's been a challenging and exciting project to work on. Tell us more about the thinking behind the amazing design. Hi, Rodi. Uh, yes, I mean, this is a most exciting uh, design. Um, after 30 years of designing any kind of power boats, the race boat is truly uh, a very innovative vessel, uh, but this time this is really a sustainable innovation. So uh, we feel that um, the, the, the choice of a foiling craft for power boating, which is very unusual, uh, will surely make for uh, something which is uh, very exciting in terms of racing, uh, but also very efficient and, and, and very, very safe. Uh, the use of materials like carbon fiber uh, and natural fibers will make for a boat which is capable of being both sustainable and uh, a great show to, to watch. And I can tell you that the E1 series will feature the most competitive male and female racing pilots and leading teams in the most electrifying event on water. It's going to be truly unique. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, as the founding partners, let's hear some of the big facts to remember on the UIM E1 World Electric Powerboat Series. There will be up to 12 teams and pilots will compete through time trials and a head-to-head -head knockout format. Our pilots will not just come from the powerboat community, but from other sports and sectors such as sailing and motorsport. We're planning 10 events per racing season, with the first season kicking off in 2023 across some incredible locations. With the help of the Santa Elena, the ship which you will all know from the Extreme Series, five of the races will be at very remote locations which will provide a real range of racing conditions. The remainder will visit some of the biggest global city waterfronts, which I expect you will all recognize. This will be a truly global championship. Well, it sounds fantastic and I really can't wait. Now, let's get the view from the governing body and talk to its president, Raffaele Culli, joining us from Monaco. Raffaele, welcome to our boat house. Thank you so much. You must be very excited to see how far the E1 series has progressed since the launch in Monaco last year. Absolutely. As uh, president of the UIM, the international governing body of uh, power boating, fully recognized by the International Olympic Committee, I was excited by the launch of the UIM 
E1 series, which was held uh, in the presence of uh, His Serene Highness Prince Albert at the Yacht Club uh, de Monaco on 25th of September. The UAM E1 uh, is the first full electric powerboat racing series and will be organized under the governance of the International Powerboat Federation, the UIM, like uh, Formula E and uh, FIA. This is uh, a new flagship class, which will create a competitive, fascinating, challenging, environmentally friendly, and allow me to say entertaining all electric uh, racing series. This initiative has uh, a unique feature since it starts from the combination of achievement of two leading motorsport industries, automobile and uh, power boating marine industry, and also exploit the latest technologies from sailing. I am convinced that uh, the UIM E1 series will allow significant improvements and innovations in eco-friendly power boating and yachting technologies, but also on more environmentally responsible behaviors. I do believe uh, the UIM E1 series will do for power boat racing what Alejandro Agag has already achieved in car racing with Formula E and now also in Extreme E. It will ring in a new era of power boat racing. Wow, just hearing about your passion for technology, the race boat series and sustainability has been just incredible. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to speak to you today, Raffaele. Thank you for hosting me. Well, it's been a really exciting unveiling of Race Bird ahead of what promises to be an amazing sporting spectacle. I, for one, can't wait for the first race. So my thanks to all of our guests today and particularly to Alejandro and Roddy. Thank you. Thank you, AJ. For us, this is a culmination of so much work, but now the start of something so exciting. I think we can see the true potential of the E1 series to win both arts and minds and show the world how powerboat racing can be exciting while being truly sustainable. I can't wait. And for those of you following our progress closely, the next big moment in the coming months will be the launch of the prototype of Racebird, along with confirmation of our first host city venues and teams. In the meantime, you can, of course, follow all the developments up to the start of the series online via e1series.com or at e1series across social media channels. But for today, from all of us, thank you all for watching and goodbye.